In the heart of Naga lies one of the most remarkable churches constructed in the Philippines during the Spanish era. As strong as the massive rocks and huge columns that defines its distinct character, is the devotion of the Bicolanos patronizing the church. Come with me and discover the secrets behind the walls of St. John the Evangelist Metropolitan Cathedral. Metropolitan Cathedral plays a very big role in the week-long celebration of the Feast of Nuestra Señora de Peña Francia. Every September, the image of Our Lady of Peña Francia is transferred from Peña Francia Shrine to the Cathedral and enshrined there for prayers and novenas. After nine days, the image will be brought back to Basilica Menore through a fluvial procession. The cathedral had been standing in this place for almost two centuries already, together with the minor seminary. Nagenos and Bicolanos are very well acquainted with how the majestic and holy grounds look like, day or night. But only few knows that the cathedral's original location is not here. Records show that works of conservation in the original location began at 1578 by Farai Pablo de Jesus and Bartolome Ruiz. But no written evidences were found to verify when the cathedral was originally constructed. Later on, the papal bull of 14th day of August 1595 established the Diocese of Naga City. The place where the cathedral was first erected was formerly known as the Padian, and that place is here, the Naga City People's Mall. Nearly two centuries later, the church faced one of huge challenges as it was destroyed by fire in 1768. It was on year 1808 when Bishop Bernardo de la Concepcion and his Archbishop Leonardo Z. Legaspi decided to transfer the cathedral to a better location because the Padian was inconveniently swampy. The cathedral now stands firmly along Elias Angle Street while facing the street of Berlin. According to Luis General Jr. on his contribution to the book entitled Inauguration and Dedication of the Metropolitan Cathedral of Naga, Dr. Domingo Abella stated that the cornerstone was laid by the bishop in 1816 and the actual works commenced in 1820. Although the church adopted the official record given by the Philippine Historical Committee in 1950 declaring that construction took place in 1808. On April 27, 1843, Monsignor Tomas Ladron de Guevara completed and inaugurated the cathedral. Thirteen years after the inauguration, another challenge came which leads to the betterment of the cathedral. The earthquake of 1887 seriously damaged every part of the church. It was Monsignor Arsenio Campo y Monasterio who led the restoration which was completed in 1890. During the incumbency of Bishop Francisco Reyes was the first great renovation work for the cathedral of the 20th century. A significant facelifting of the facade was done including the installation of the clock. Originally, the facade was designed with three female stone figures. Two of them are still in its original places, while the other one was removed and replaced by a cupola right at the top center of the facade. Soon, the cupola was replaced by a taller one and it still exists until today.
The Naga Cathedral was situated along the streets of Elias Angeles, surrounded by other historical landmarks of Naga like the Episcopal Palace, the Universidad de Santa Isabel, and the Holy Rosary Minor Seminary. The grounds of the cathedral measures approximately 8,000 square meters, excluding the church and the seminary. One of the main attractions of the grounds of the cathedral is the Porta Maria, constructed in the commemoration to the tercentenary celebration of devotion to Our Lady of Peña Francia. At the top of the Porta Maria was a huge image of Ina with two angels beside her. This portal was proportioned parallel to the main entrance of the cathedral. Upon entering, you'll be approaching the elevated platform we call the Quadricentennial Arch. This was constructed in celebration of the 400th year of the Diocese of Cáceres and it serves as an altar for special occasions. Within the grounds of the church, you will see four statues namely San Lorenzo Luis de Manila, the first Filipino saint, San Pedro Calungsod, another martyr of the Catholic religion, St. John the Evangelist, the patron saint of the cathedral, and St. Peter Baptist, the titular patron of the Archdiocese of Cáceres. Like any other churches, the cathedral also have stations of the cross, each with two lamps, and the tuntunan with four huge columns and a dome supported by eight posts. The Tuntunan rises approximately 8.5 meters. Also, the grounds have 13 benches, 21 lamp posts, 11 flag poles, and 67 parking slots. But the grandeur of the church does not end here on the grounds. Let's explore more of it. With the adaptation of Spanish Romanesque and Baroque architecture, Metropolitan Cathedral endures the centuries while preserving its splendid beauty. Parish staffs who were well acquainted with the cathedral's history would say that the church was originally made out of boulders all linked together with egg white due to undeveloped construction system, but no approved official record was found to support the speculation. Though early researches states that the walls were made of adobe, a natural building material made from sand, clay, water, and organic particles shaped into bricks. Adobe is also known to be particularly susceptible to seismic damages, but the event of 1768 and 1887 where a devastating earthquake took place lead the walls to an unbearable disaster. This brought the church to a restoration that changes its original identity. The exterior walls were then plastered making it stronger and more durable. Aside from plastering, its restoration also adopted the application of angled buttresses which basically strengthens further and adds appeal to the exterior walls. What makes the facade quite elegant is the twin pilaster that flanks on both sides of the high arc entrance. It has a tall door made of narrow wood carved with images of St. Peter Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. Above it is the seal of Archdiocese of Cáceres and a crown symbolizing the canonical coronation of Ina. It has a gentle curvature on both corners to create a softened facade illusion. On both ends of the facade are two symmetrical hexagonal belfries and on top is a pediment with a copula and a clock. The gable roofs were made of corrugated galvanized iron coated in red. The trusses were hidden. 
at a clear story which were no longer visible from the inside. They used that portion of the church as a passageway from the front door to the highest belfry above the altar. The interior presents a magnificent ceiling designed with highly ornate paintings. The Naga Cathedral's flooring uses different kinds of tiles that defines the parts of the cathedral. For the high altar, green crystal granite tiles were used together with mosaic tiles that serves as a partition near the table. For the name, white marble tiles were used with another set of mosaic tiles which forms the Great Jubilee Year 2000 logo and the seal of the Archdiocese of Cáceres laid on the middle and on the main entrance of the nave respectively. For the side aisles and general flooring, peach marble tiles were used. Inside the church is a perfect realization of Spanish ambience. The walls and the ceiling were creatively painted with Baroque's elegant curves and trompe-louis that matches the ornate carvings of the retablos and the altar. Along the yakal chairs of the nave is a beautiful arcaded aisle which leads directly to the altar. The present retablo was handcrafted manually during the episcopal reign of Bishop Legazpi. On its right is another altar for the Virgin Mary, and on the left is for St. Joseph. The wall is thick which is capable of engraves as iconostasis. There are also stations of the cross placed on the sides of the wall. On left and right sides lies the confessionals and angel fonts. On the facade is a stained glass with an image of a bird which represents the Holy Spirit and acts as a natural light. On the left wing is another set of chairs and a door towards the sacristy. This room is off limits to the public. On the right is the retablo of the Blessed Sacrament, the place where blessings and prayers, relics, images, and holy items were done. This is a door that leads to the bell tower. Only authorized persons were allowed to enter for safety reasons. The previous retablo was once attached onto the wall. With the wall being more fragile as time passed by, this retablo was decided to be constructed feet apart the wall. The space at the back now serves as a passageway for the devotees of Ina to touch the image during her festival.
Below the retablo of St. Joseph is the grave of Pedro Pablo I. Sonco, a late Spanish priest who once served the diocese. Everyone is given the opportunity to discover the hidden treasures behind the walls of the cathedral. You should be grateful that you're one of the few people who were given the privilege to witness such discovery. From what I have shared to you today, may you keep it in your mind, cherish, and share your knowledge to others. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Good day. Bye-bye. 